Hello, Unity developers. Welcome to part 6 on making a multiplayer 2D platform game in Unity using the Socket Weaver SDK. Today, we're going to cover how the real time agent compensates for network jitter and how you can adjust the snap distance setting of the real time agent to teleport players in a networked game. So let's get started. The Socket Weaver real-time agent uses a simple and effective motion smoothing algorithm to compensate for the network jitter. For example, we want to synchronize the position of a player game object that moves at 20 meters per second, and we have the network tick rate configured at 20. So the player moves around 1 meter per network tick. The green line shows the game frames and the white line indicates the distance that the player has traveled. If the game is running at 60 frames per second, for every 3 game frames, the player will move 1 meter. As you can see at the bottom half of the screen, after some delay, the position update of player 1 arrived at player 2's game. The first update arrived at game frame 5, and it tells the SDK that player 1 has moved 1 meter from its initial position. The second update arrived at game frame 7, and it tells the SDK that player 1 has moved 2 meters. The updates arrived with different delay, and if we calculate the player speed between two updates to move player 1's copy, the speed inconsistency between each update can cause movement jittery. To compensate the inconsistency, we can change the smooth level setting of the real-time agent. The smooth level controls how many updates the real-time agent will use to calculate the moving average speed of a game object. If we set it to 1, the real-time agent will calculate the moving average speed between two updates. And as you can see, the resulting speed is much more consistent, and the player will have a better and smooth experience. However, the trade-off of the moving average speed is that it adds extra delay for the client to respond. We recommend keeping the smooth level below 3. Next, I'm going to add a portal to our game. I have prepared the portal prefab. I'm just going to place it in the scene. After that, I'm going to add a new empty game object for the portal destination position. So when the player enters the portal, it will be teleported to the destination position. And we have finished setting up the portal. I want to modify the snap distance of the player real-time agent to show you how it could affect the teleport. I'm going to set it to a large value, 50. And let's build a game. The build has finished. I'm going to move the player into the portal. And as you can see, in the Unity editor, the player did not get teleported to the destination, instead it just quickly moved to the destination. What happened is that when player 1 is teleported, its game object moved to a destination position in one game frame, and the real-time agent of player 1's copy in player 2's game will detect a large position change between two updates. Since the snap distance is greater than the teleport distance, the real-time agent still has to apply the smooth movement algorithm. It calculates the player speed and uses the speed to synchronize the player position. But this is not the behavior we are looking for. We want the player to be at the destination instantly. To do that, we need to use a snap distance that is smaller than the teleport distance so that the real-time agent will snap the game object to the new position. In our game, we can set the snap distance of the player to something like 2, so it will be smaller than the teleport distance. Let's build the game again. The players have connected to the game. I'm going to move the player so we can observe the teleport effect better.
Looking good. The player is snapped to this nation and that's great. So we have covered all for today's video and as always, the full source code is published on GitHub. If you want to chat with us or if you have encountered an issue using our SDK, you can join us on Discord. The links are in the video descriptions. In the next video, we're going to add a boss into the game and it will be the last video for this tutorial series. Thank you guys. Talk to you later.